before we wind down this video here, let's go ahead and do our show CDP neighbor command again. And let's deal with the connectivity between switch two and switch one. And that's on gig zero one for both of these interfaces. So I'm gonna go into interface gig zero slash one. And, and before I issue the command here to set the mode to dynamic desirable, let's do a show interface status G and oops, pipe include G. Okay, so there, gig zero two is a trunk, gig zero one currently is still set up for VLAN one. So let's go switch port mode dynamic desirable. And we'll give it a second here, it should bounce. And now it's back up. And now let's use our up arrow and do a show interface status pipe include G. And now notice gig zero slash one is trunking. Okay, so pretty cool, right? So now if I do a show interface trunk, notice what I've got here. Gig zero one and gig zero two are now trunking. You'll notice that gig zero one is telling me that the mode is desirable. And we can see that it's trunking. And you can also see that all of those VLANs are intact. So VLANs 1 and then 10 through 13 are allowed on gig 01 and gig 02. Now let's go over to switch 2 and examine that configuration there. Show interface trunk. And here we've got gig 01 now is auto. So auto was passive. And so once we set switch 1 to be desirable, we negotiated a trunk. And you could see that the VLANs that are allowed in the act and active in the management domain are VLANs 1 and 10 through 13. By doing a show VTP status, we can see that it picked up the VTP domain of PS1 and it did sync to the current revision number. So now we've got a consistent VLAN database throughout the domain. The only thing left here, if we do a show CDP neighbors, is that we have a connection between switch three and switch two, and that's on gig zero two. And right now, if we include the gig interfaces here, you can see that the connection to gig 02 is not trunking right now. Rather, it's an access port. Now, we can enable that again. We can simply go into interface G0 slash 2 and switch port mode trunk. And that actually is enough. We don't have to set the encapsulation. So we just made it a static trunk port and the other side auto-negotiated. If I do that up arrow a couple times here, actually let's type end. Now we're connected as a trunk. Show interface trunk should indicate that we've got VLANs 1 and 10 through 13 allowed across all those trunks. And based on our topology here, we have now enabled trunks between switch 1, switch 2, and switch 3. We've synced up their VLAN databases using VTP with the VTP domain PS1. We have R1 that is placed in VLAN 10. Let's go to switch three and place R2 in VLAN 10 as well. And we'll go config T, interface F0 slash one, switch port host. That's a macro that enables something called port fast. We'll see in the next module. And the port is set to access, and then we'll say switch port access VLAN 10. Show interface status. Okay, so now I see F0 slash 1 is connected in VLAN 10. Now the real test would be to try to ping between R1 and R2. Now they are on the 172.16.10 network. 172.16.10.1 and 172.16.10.2. So let's go over here to R2 and let's see if he can ping 172.16.10.1. And we have a successful ping across the trunks and we are happy. We have connectivity now between R1 and R2.